All right, first of all, congratulations on winning the 2010 Team America Rocketry Challenge. Uh, after 669 initial applications and then whittled down to 100 here, you guys are top dogs. It's got to feel good. It definitely does feel good. We've come a long way. We've all stuck together through this, and we've all been a team for a long time now, and it feels good. We've been here for four years. Finally pull off top. Can't get any better than this. <laughs> yeah, especially since this is our last year, so to... Uh to kind of snag first place and then have our, our middle school team uh, get second. That was really neat. And it's kind of cool because now we know that there's a group behind us that's going to continue this for us. Um, like he said, it is great that um, it's our last year and we made it. Uh, we weren't expecting it, but we, we, we tried our best and it, it pulled off in the end. Yeah, it's great. It's really an honor. Uh, to receive this award and uh, to do so well in this competition. Uh, just We just did the best we could do, and uh, this was the best we could have hoped for. So, yeah, it was great. If you would, tell me a little bit about the support system you have back at school. It's, it's an unusual thing back from my day to think of anybody with a rocketry club. How did that come about? Uh, what's the hierarchy there? What kind of support do you have, and, and who has inspired you in this process? Oh, uh, we've got a... Uh, Great bunch of mentors at Penn Manor High School. We've got Brian Osmolinski. He's a physics teacher there. He does a lot with the Rocket Club. He runs it within the school. We also have uh, Tom Amit and Chris Land and uh, several other mentors that really help us a lot. And uh, they uh, help taught us how to build rockets, really. And uh, we've just been doing the competition from what they've taught us. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that we would not be here without our mentors. Mr. Osmolinski has you know, really kept this club together, and he's been really fighting for it. It wasn't always you know, recognized by our school. It was definitely some fighting on his part. And Mr. Almond definitely taught us pretty much everything we needed in order to get where we are now. Well, well, you know, it's really great. We've had the same mentors now for a long time, and we all work together very well. And they support us, and we, we support them, and it's great to be able to pull it off for them, really, just as much as us. They, they, they... They're so happy for us, and we're glad that we can help them out and keep, keep going with it. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute the breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. Talk to me about what it took to put together the vehicle that won. What, uh, what design, design criteria did you look at? Uh, what did you decide on? Why did you build what you built the way you built it? Well, we built the same rocket that, basically the same rocket we've been building for the past few years. We didn't really change our design too much. We've always done decently well with it, so we kind of stuck with the same, same design aspect, and everything that we've done in the past has been, been doing good, so we, we pretty much stuck with the same, and it's been working out for us. Are there any one of the challenges in particular that created any particular issues? Of course, the move to a streamer this year had to be technically intriguing. Yeah, that was actually, we had to think about how we were going to use and what, use and what materials we were going to use. And uh, we, we came up with a good design, and I mean, it seemed, seemed, to be, seemed to be very efficient. Yeah, we started out with these uh, paper streamers, and they just weren't doing the job, and they're, they're way too much mass for uh, how much they were actually causing in drag. So we uh, switched to the metallic mylar, and uh, that folds a lot nicer, and, and we get a lot more out of that. And so we really focused on that. You know, only got down to one streamer, and that did the job. Looks good, too. <laughs> and also, what really helps is baby powder. Um, <laughs> it's so true. I'm not kidding, because baby powder gives us extra weight for uh, when we need to wait to, so we don't go over the altitude. And then when it ejects, um, we don't have that weight anymore, and that's always so nice. It, mm -hmm. it also keeps the parachute from sticking. <laughs> baby powder. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, 
combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Two final questions. What did you get out of this overall for you personally, and where do you expect it to take you? This competition has taught me a lot, taught me a lot about teamwork. It's been a great opportunity to travel with these guys and uh, do this competition. And we've been doing it for four years now, and it's really a lot of fun. And where I expect it to take me, I'm not actually going into aerospace uh, in the future. I'm not foreseeing myself doing that. But I still think uh, I've learned a lot about teamwork, about designing things, about try, uh, perseverance, trying to get things to work. So, yeah, I think I've learned a lot. For me, I, I actually got a lot of fun out of this. Um, I like coming down here to Nationals. I, I like the Rocket Club. Uh, I like this whole entire program. It's really fun to just be in. Uh, and it's actually a great opportunity to see like all of the exhibits and stuff. You learn a lot in those exhibits, and that's, all, that's really nice. And the future for you? Uh, f future, um, I'm not going into aerospace, but it is very interesting. Uh, I will be uh like i like model rocketry i'll probably be making rockets um probably for the rest of my life i, I just like it yeah, and i of course i've had a great time working with these guys and uh definitely uh honing our, our rocket skills and getting it down to the point where we can win something like this is really cool i uh plan to go into uh, computer sciences later on but i'm hoping that computer sciences lead me into aerospace uh, technologies and hopefully I can apply my skills there. It's a neat field. Well, the rocket competition has definitely taught me a lot about teamwork and a lot about how to basically just build a rocket and make things work out of what you have and you have time limits and you have to you have to produce and, and we did and uh, the future is definitely helped me out with the future. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, con if I will go into aerospace or, or what, what the future holds for me, but it's definitely given me a great opportunity and, and to see what's out there and to see my opportunities and how many of them there actually are. It should be a good future. Gentlemen, once again, from all of us at Aero News and Aero TV, our congratulations to you all.